All right, welcome to our first Scratch program. And for our program today, we're going to start with something really simple. And we're going to program our cat sprite. The first thing we're going to do is give it a name. That should always be our first step in making any program. So up here where it says untitled and a number, I'm just going to click and erase that. And I'm going to call it dancing cat. Once I've done that, I can click off and the name will be saved. Now, we are ready to begin creating our program. On the left, we have our code pieces and our code menu over here lets us jump to the different sections. We have our canvas in the middle. This is our workspace and our stage over here on the right where we can preview what's happening when we create our program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this cat move. I'm gonna start by telling it when to start moving because it needs some way to know when do I start this program. To do that, I'm gonna come over here to the yellow events button. I'm gonna click on events and for this program, I want when green flag clicked. I'm gonna drag it over and put it right here on my canvas. Now this says, whatever's underneath here, start it when I click the green flag, which is over here. Now I don't have anything yet, so nothing would happen. I need to go tell it what to do. So I'm gonna go to motion, and I'm gonna start by having my cat move 10 steps. I snap it in just like a puzzle piece, and if I make a mistake, I can unsnap it and put it somewhere else. If I don't want a code piece, drag it back over here and let go, and it will put it back on the menu. So I'm gonna snap this piece in and test it by clicking my green flag. Each time I click the green flag, my cat moves. That's great. But what I want my cat to do is dance. So I'm gonna move him back here to the middle. And in order to have him dance, I need him to go both forward and backward. To have him do that, I'm gonna go back and get another move 10 steps. I'm gonna snap it in underneath, but in order to make him go backwards, I need to change this 10 to a negative number. So I'm gonna make it negative 10. When I click that green flag, uh-oh, doesn't look like anything's happening. There's a reason for that. Computers process things a lot faster than we humans do. So it is moving 10 steps forward, 10 steps backward, but doing it so quickly that it looks like he's not actually moving. If I unsnap these pieces and I move this one up here, our negative 10 steps, and I test it out with my green flag, he is going to move backwards. But when I put the two pieces together, it happens too quickly. So I'm gonna put my first move 10 steps, my positive number, and I'm going to go to the control menu over here in orange. On the control menu is something that says wait 10 seconds or wait one second. I'm gonna snap that in under move and then put my negative move underneath. Let's see if this makes a difference. That one I can definitely see. This wait code gives it just enough time so that we can see what's actually happening. I can adjust these numbers if I don't want them to be 10. These are what we call variables, and a variable is something we can change. So instead of 10 steps, I'm gonna have him move 40 steps forward and negative 40 steps backwards that should give him a much larger movement across the stage. So now I can see that movement a little better. 
what I don't want to do if I'm going to make them dance is have to keep clicking this green flag every time I want them to do it. I need to make sure it can run by itself. So on my control menu, I have some really neat options. And the one we're going to use is a loop code. And there are several different kinds of loops. You could say loop for a certain amount of time or loop if something happens or loop until something happens. But one of my favorites is the forever loop. This says just keep doing it forever and ever and ever until I click that stop button. So I'm gonna move my forever box out here and I'm gonna grab the top move piece. If I grab one of the ones underneath, it separates the code and I want this whole chunk of code to go inside. So I'm going to grab the top piece and I'm going to stick it inside the forever box. I'm going to then snap my forever box into the green flag. Now what's going to happen when I run this is he'll move 40 steps forward wait one second, move negative 40 steps, that's backwards, and then immediately move 40 steps forward again and keep doing that over and over and over. What I want to be careful of is if I only have one weight code in here. That's fine between these two pieces, but we want to remember that if we go from this move backwards code, the next step is to jump right back to the move forward. And that's where we ran into the problems of it moving too quickly. So I want a second wait code that I'm going to put in at the bottom. And now I'm ready to test my code. When I click this green flag, he should start moving forwards and backwards and keep doing it until I click the stop sign. So we can see our program is working but he's going a little bit slow for a dance. So I'm going to stop the code and I'm going to change some more variables, right? In my wait code, it says one second. One second seems like a fast amount of time for us, but it's actually a pretty large chunk of time when it comes to computers. So I'm going to change this variable. Instead of one, I'm gonna make it point five. That's half of a second. I'm going to do the same thing to the other weight code, 0.5, and test it out. Now I can see he's moving faster. If I want him to go even faster, I can keep changing that. Maybe I'll make it 0.25 or a quarter of a second. And let's see it now. I like this one. I like him moving pretty fast, but you can adjust that variable to make him move at whatever speed you like. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my program because I have the beginnings of it ready here. In my dance code, I have my events code when the green flag is clicked to tell it when to start. I have a forever box, which is a loop code and that loop tells it keep going forever and ever and ever. I have my move 40 steps. The positive 40 means go forward, and the negative 40 down here moves him backwards. And I've added two wait codes at 0.25 seconds to tell him to pause a little bit in between the steps so we can actually see it happening. That's a great start, but if he's dancing, we want some music. For this, I'm gonna to go to the sound menu. And on the sound menu, I have a couple of choices. I'm gonna get play sound meow until done. And I'm just gonna put it over here. If I double click on it, it's going to preview it for me. So I can put this up here and snap it in and let's see what happens. So my cat's meowing as he goes, but you may have noticed it slowed him down a little bit. 
because this code goes in order, one step at a time. So he moves. When he's done moving, he waits a quarter of a second, moves again, waits a quarter of a second, and then plays sound meow until done. That means it'll wait until that sound is completely finished before it goes on to the next step. So there's a couple things we can do to adjust this, but the easiest thing to do is to take this code out and create a new chunk of code. So I'm just gonna move this over a little bit to give me some space here. I'm gonna go back to events and get another green flag. Now, I'm gonna snap in play sound meow till done and let's see what happens. Well, my cat's dancing, but the meow only happened one time. I need to remember that I want that forever box, that loop code to keep that sound going. So I'm gonna go back to control, get my forever box, and put that meow inside. Let's test it now. So now he'll play meow until done. And that basically means he'll play that sound. Once that sound is done, it just goes back to the beginning and starts the sound all over again. Now that meow is cute, but can get really, really annoying. And since he's dancing, maybe we want some music for him instead. So luckily we can change this sound. Up here on my sounds tab, I have my meow sound over here, but there's also a button down here that lets me choose a sound. I'm gonna click on choose a sound and it brings me to my sound menu. I have a ton of different sounds to choose from. Um, I have all of these great things. For this, I'm gonna go to percussion. We want a nice drum beat for this. And if I hover my mouse over one of these choices, it will preview it for me. And when I find one that I like, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. That sound is now added to my list. I can go back and add more sounds. So I'm gonna go back to percussion again. I'm gonna grab a hand clap. Go back one more time. Back to percussion. go with this one I think. So now I have a couple of sound choices. I'm going to go back to code and I have play sound meow but if I click on this triangle now I should see all of my choices. I'm going to go to drum satellite. Let's see what this one sounds like. Not bad. All right, I can change it up. Let's go with human beatbox. And let's try hand clap. And I can also go back to sound, get a second play sound, and choose another one to go along. So let's add this one in and see what happens. And I can layer up those sounds any way I want until I'm happy with the sound that I have to go along with my dancing cat. So now I have a cat that moves. I have a cat that has some music to dance to. And right now he's kind of dancing in outer space, which is boring. So down here on the right, 
is my backdrop. This is my background for my stage. I'm going to click on choose a backdrop and I have a whole bunch to choose from. Again, I have my categories at the top. I'm going to go for indoors and I think I'm going to go for a concert. Now I have my cat on stage at a concert. Put him down here on the stage and play my code. I think I'll change that and we'll go with human beatbox and see if that makes it a little better. And you can mess around with your sounds as long as you want. Now the last thing we're going to do is have a little fun with our cat because not only is he dancing, we're going to turn him into Disco Kitty. So under Disco Kitty, to make him into Disco Kitty, we're gonna come over here to the Looks menu. And on the Looks menu, I'm gonna go down just a little bit until I get to Change Color Effect by 25. Be careful because there's also a set color effect to zero. We want the change option. And I'm just gonna put this change option in here on my movement code. This changes his color effect by 25, right? That's a measurement for how much color that is going to change. Let's preview that and see what happens. And you can see he's now turned into Rainbow Disco Kitty. There are other effects in here that you can mess around with. I'm rather fond of the whirl effect. And so you can experiment with a bunch of the different special effects. When you're done, here's the most important part. Double check that you've named it Dancing Cat and you want to click the orange share button. If you don't click share, it doesn't become public and I can't see it. So when you click the share button, it's going to bring you here. Here's our dancing cat. And if you want to put some information in here, you can, but you don't have to. What you do need to do to turn this in is come down here to the blue copy link button. You're going to copy that link. You just click that button. It should automatically copy it. Doesn't look like anything happened, but it's now saved in memory. And you're gonna go back to the assignment in Classroom, open the assignment, choose Add, select a link, and paste that link in to turn it in. Do not forget to click Turn In when you're done. And that's it. You've now made your first program with our dancing disco kitty.